Hey, what's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. This is Mark the Messenger. We're back in another video. This one's going to be about seven signs of God's calling you for self deliverance. And I made a video a couple months ago, I think it was like three or four months ago, and it's talking about um, how to be self delivered. And I pretty much went over like my testimony and things that I did. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the signs that God showed me through my time while I was getting uh, delivered. And I know that some people, they think that you have to go to a church or a pastor to get a deliverance. And I'm not saying that you can't do that. But best believe that if you're obedient to God, he, you could get self-delivered as well, too. This is my testimony. This is back in 2018. There's many times. And I could go, there's only seven signs shown, but I can think of like 15 signs on the top of my head that I remember were when I was getting like the self-deliverance and things that God was leading me to. And so I hope this video can edify you guys and bless you guys for those who are seeking deliverance. Let's go. Let's go. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. The first thing when it comes to self-deliverance, the first sign that you, well, it's not an order, so... But one of the first things I notice is you think it or desire to get baptized, okay? Um, to The Bible says to get baptized to wash away that sins, you know, calling on the name of the Lord, getting baptized in the name of Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when I got baptized, my, my experience, like the minute I got out of the water, like I felt clean, I felt reborn, like for real, like I got born again. And that's what many people who... Who call them like a lot of people are just religious they're not born again okay uh they don't have the holy spirit they have a religious spirit like i always tell you guys so you're either going to be religious or born again okay so which one are you the bible even says that uh let's read this verse this is in john chapter 3 verse 3 to 7 <clears throat> it says that jesus <clears throat> jesus answered and said unto him verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god Okay, verse 5 says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is of flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee that ye must be born again. So that's the, that's the number one thing when it comes to uh, self-deliverance. Getting baptized, that's one of the first things you want to do. Okay, but, uh, Peter even says that you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and you know when you repent, you know, getting baptized in the name of the Lord. So... That's one of the first things I, I, I recommend all you guys do if you haven't already when it comes to self-deliverance, getting baptized. Now, where can you get baptized at? Uh, you can go to your local church or if you know a brother and sister that's in the truth um, or if you know like a family member. Uh, personally, I, uh, I I was baptized by a pastor back in 2015, but in 2018, I rebaptized myself. I baptized my, myself in my own uh, bath, bathtub. So if you can't find nobody... And, you know, you could just do it yourself. Okay. I know a lot of people might disagree on that. You know, do what you got to, you know, say what you got to say in the comments below. But that's what I did. I'm telling you guys what I did. Okay. Number two is you will see many confirmations and signs that God is calling you. Okay. That God is calling you. Remember, many are called, few are chosen. And you will see many signs that God is leading you to deliverance. Okay. Uh, whether it's it, you start to get con convicted more when you do, uh, you know, whatever sin that you're committing, you start to get convicted. You know, because remember, there was a time when we used to sin, we used to be ignorant. Uh, we used to be, you know, deceived and we would be doing things and we wouldn't feel no conviction, nothing, no guilt, nothing. But now as, as you start to get older and you start to grow with your relationship with, with God and with Christ, you start to notice that that conviction gets stronger. OK, when you start to know that conviction gets stronger every time you're sinning, OK, when willfully sinning, OK, that's when God is calling you for self-deliverance. That's when God's calling you to change. If someone is calling me right now. Right, I'm so sorry, guys. Someone just called me and I hit the cancel button and automatically closed the video. That could have been a spiritual warfare attack, but because this guy never calls me. Why would I make in the video? Anyways, okay. So as I was saying that you'll notice that the conviction starts getting stronger. And when the conviction starts getting stronger, now you, one thing I noticed that what I did, you start looking for solutions. You start looking for answers. You start doing your research. You start reading your Bible more. You start praying more. And you'll notice that God is leading you. John chapter 15, verse 16 says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and, and ordain you, okay? You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, okay? God chooses you and ordain you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever you ask in my Father's name, he may give to you. So that's exactly when you're being called, when you, uh, when God's calling you out of darkness, that's exactly what he's doing, to, to draw you closer to your light and to bear much fruit. And through your fruits, you save other people's uh, souls. You, you win people over for Christ. That's what it's all about, preaching uh, preaching the kingdom to get people to go to God's kingdom. Because many people are in Satan's kingdom unknowingly. Even some of these Christians, some of these religious people, they don't they have no idea. Okay, number three is you have acknowledge, okay, that you have demonic strongholds that you have to break. Yes, this is something that's not really talked about much in the church is uh, demonic spirits and demonic strongholds. That's why most of my videos are kind of centered around. Now, I don't just base it around that, but I talk about that a lot because most people don't, okay? What are demonic strongholds, okay? So what is a stronghold? Let me read this Bible verse for you guys real quick. So this is in 2 Timothy 
chapter, or sorry, sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, it says, For we walk in the flesh, we do not uh, war against the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to pulling down of the strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So, what are strongholds? You ever have times when, when you're, when, you know, you just randomly, you know, random times of the day, and you start to think of blasphemous thoughts, things that you will never say. It just randomly just pops up in your mind. And you're like, you're trying to control yourself. Why, why is this happening? That is a demonic stronghold. You ever have times when you're trying to give up a sin and you find yourself like a couple days later, you get that strong urge, that strong desire to do it, even though like you're, you don't want to do it no more, but out of nowhere it just pops up. That is a demonic stronghold. Okay. You ever have times when, you know, you want to pick up your Bible and all of a sudden you so want to, within five, 10 minutes, you start getting sleepy, demonic strongholds, guys. This is something that needs to be talked about more because a lot of people don't know that they have them. I used to have it too. Whenever you give up a sin, and this is the more you keep giving giving over to willful sin, the more that the demonic strongholds build in your mind. Okay, we must have the helmet of salvation, the full armor of God, but especially the helmet of salvation, so we can fight against these demonic strongholds and have wisdom, so we know the things that we're doing. You know, that's not opening any doors to allow it to happen in our life. Okay, so once you start to acknowledge that it is a stronghold that's causing you to go back to this, and or it's a stronghold that's causing you to think blasphemous thoughts, things things that you will never say. Negative, it's not just blasphemous; it could be just be negative thoughts in general, random throughout the day. Okay, and you gotta understand that when you're watching things like pornography and stuff like that, you're opening up doors for demonic strongholds in your mind. Like I said, this is not talked about in the church. It has to be exposed, okay? So always keep that in mind. When God's calling you to deliverance, you have to acknowledge the strongholds. You have to, the demonic strongholds that's keeping you in bondage, okay? This is one of the things that I didn't even know about. I did not know about. So um, yeah, number four is God puts you in an isolation season, yes. So when it comes to deliverance, God will put you in an isolation season. So what does that mean when God puts you in an isolation season? So that means that you might notice that your friends don't really hit you up no more. Um, you might notice that you just, or or you just, like maybe they are still hitting you up, but you just desire to stay at home. You desire to be close to the Lord. Okay, you desire to, you know, maybe open your your Bible more, and you and God puts that spirit in you because there's no more distractions. Because some people, guys, they if, uh, evil communication comes great manners. So some people they don't even know that they're act, they're actually distracting you. Every time God's calling you to get closer to Him, the darkness is gonna try to draw you back into darkness. Every time you notice this. Let me know in the comments. Every time you notice you're drawing yourself more into light, the darkness won't let you go. It will just kind of just drag you back, okay? So always understand that when you're in an isolation season, God will never isolate you for your whole entire life. That's not possible. So if you're isolated for, because you could be isolated for uh, for a certain time, but that's not God isolating you. And you know, you find yourself, when you're isolated, you, you find yourself giving over to willful sin. You're away from God. So that could be kind of like demonic. That could be like something that's not, that's not healthy for you, okay? So... But when you're isolated and you find yourself, you know, drawing closer to the light, that's a good thing, okay? There's no distractions. And what Satan wants you to do, he wants you distracted. But when you're isolated, no one hitting you up, or maybe people are hitting you up and you're just not even phased by it because you want to learn more about God. You want to draw closer to him. And that's okay. Remember, isolation is only for a season. It could be three months, six months. It will never be for like a, for your whole entire life. So I always want to make that very clear because I know the Bible does say no, it's not good for a man to be alone. But if you're alone for a couple months, a couple weeks, and it's for a reason, it's for a purpose, you try to draw closer to the Lord, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? I was isolated when God first called me to self-deliverance for about nine months, nine, actually almost a year. And I was on semen retention. I was doing a lot of things that were building up my spirit. I learned about the Bible. I would meditate on the Bible every single day and night. I still do. But back then, I was just, just 100% all in, okay? No friend. I didn't have, now there's nothing wrong about having friends, so please don't get the wrong message. But I'm just saying that I was just, had a burning desire, burning passion to learn about my God. So, you know, yeah. Number five is you have a desire to be set apart. Okay, you have to, what does it mean to be set apart? It means to be holy. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, that follow peace with all men and without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Okay, so you have to make peace with all men and you have to have holiness because without such, no man shall see the Lord. That's in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Okay, so to be set apart means to be, the, what is the world doing? You want to do the opposite of what the world is doing. The world is worshiping celebrities. The world is worshiping money, vanity, things that's no profit. The world is serving the flesh. So you want to do the opposite. You want to serve your spirit. Okay, the world, most of the world guys, they don't even know that they're worshiping the devil, okay, through their lifestyle. They might not say it out of their mouth, but, you know, some of them do say it. But some people, they, they do it unknowingly. They're worshiping Satan, but through their lifestyle, 
Okay, so you want to worship the Most High God, the God of Israel, through your lifestyle too, by you being obedient, by you being coming out from among them and be separate. Says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I shall receive you as sons and daughters of the Almighty. So always understand when it comes to being self-deliverance, and this is what one thing I noticed about being set apart is that it gives you spiritual strength because the people who are of the world, the temptations are just overtaking them. Okay, but when you're set apart. It's like less of that because you don't put yourself in a situation for those things to happen. And I know for some of you brothers and sisters might say, oh, Mark, it's lonely. Um, you know, Mark, I have a hard time or stuff like that. And yes, this walk is not easy. That's why Christ says, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross daily and follow him. When you speak the truth, you'll be hated. When you're a follower of Christ and you just want to, you want to, because you love him. You don't just love him with your mouth. You love him with your actions because the Bible says, Jesus says that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So when you truly love Christ, when you truly love God, you're going to find yourself doing what the word says and being obedient to it. That's your actions, okay? So being set apart, you know, this. let me, let me read this to you guys. Let me just read it off the book. Now, this is through the lab, my laptop, but um, it's through the Bible. King, King James Version. Yeah, I got to say this. Oh, let me read this one too. 1 Peter chapter uh, 2 verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a strange people, that you shall show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So it says a peculiar people, which means like a strange people. So when people see you, you know, um, you don't want to partake in pagan holidays no more. Halloween, Christmas, Easter, stuff like that. Oh, you don't want to, you don't want to take, uh, celebrate valentine's day halloween oh you're strange you're weird you're crazy oh you don't eat pork no more you're you're weird you're strange you're crazy you know they, they think that you're but all you're doing is just honoring the bible honoring god's word okay you're keeping god's laws you're being set apart you, you love him you're keeping the commandments and now all of a sudden you're just so peculiar which means strange you're you now you're strange to people okay that's what being truly set apart is okay but this is a verse i wanted to read this is in hebrew chapter 12 verse 14 it says follow peace with all men and holiness and without such no man shall see the Lord, okay? So yes, you got to follow peace with all men. When people are casting stones at you because you're speaking truth, you're not speaking your truth, you're speaking the truth out the Bible, okay? And you're, you know, being set apart, you're practicing a holiness, okay? But if people who don't do that, they won't see the Lord. They won't see him. That's what the Bible says. I don't know when you speak the truth, you're an enemy. But that's the Bible straight from the Bible, okay? So number six is you have repented, and led to fast, and now you're being led to fasting and prayer, okay? You have repented, okay? Whatever sin that you're committing, or even the sins that we commit that we don't even know, okay? Because a lot of times, guys, we sin without even knowing. That's what the Bible says. If any man says he's without sin, he is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So anyone who's telling you that they're without sin, they are a liar, and the truth is not in them. And I'll make sure to back it up with the Bible right here, King James Version, somewhere on the screen, okay? So you have repented, okay? So what does it mean to repent? Does it mean to cry, God, I'm sorry, but you still do it again? No. You repent and you have no intentions on doing it again. Now, does that mean that you're not going to fall short? I'm not saying that you're never going to sin again, but you have repented and you, you don't have the desire to do it again. And God knows your heart. He knows everything. Okay. So when you truly repent, he knows if, okay, he just saying that, you know, he just crying and, you know, crying doesn't mean that you're repenting. You know, people cry, you know, because they, they reap what they sow. Now they cry and they get all sad, but that's not true repentance. Repentance is turning away from something. And, you know, and without the desire to do it again, that's true repentance. Okay. And, you know, now you're led to fasting and prayer. You're led to fasting and prayer. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, that certain spirits do not come out, but by fasting and prayer. What is fasting? Not eating for 24 hours. You could drink water, no juice, nothing sugary, just water. There's a different type of fast in the Bible. They did. There's a Daniel fast where he pretty much ate uh, vegetables or veggies. There's a dry fast where they didn't drink water or they didn't eat anything. They didn't consume anything. No water, no juice, no food. Uh, there's a water fast, which is what I mostly do sometimes, is when you just drink water throughout the day. 24 hours. You can go as, you can go as much as you want. I believe the longest in the, in the New Testament was three days, 72 hours in the book of Acts. Christ fasted 40 days. You don't have to fast 40 days. Now, if you're led to, hey, that's between you and God. But yeah, so... One thing I noticed is that when it came to self-deliverance, when I repented, I started fasting in prayer. And what that what that does, it keep not only does it keep you closer to God, but it also you feel pure in your spirit. When you're fasting and praying, it builds up your spirit. You feed your spirit. The Bible says the flesh is raging war against your spirit, and the spirit is raging war against your flesh. So when you're feeding your spirit, your spirit is now strong to fight against your flesh. So you don't fall into temptations, you don't fall into the snares. Okay. Number seven is you have noticed you have demons. And you're, that you're battling with, which is all comes to acknowledging, all comes to having accountability. It all comes to knowing that, you know, you ever notice, guys, let me talk about this, right? You're sleeping in your room, um, you're, you know, by yourself, 
uh, no one's home, or let's just say someone's home, and you feel like there's like a presence in your room, even though you're just there by yourself, okay? But you feel like there's something there, okay? Those are demons. Yes, those are unclean spirits, and they torment you. They feed off of your fear. They feed off of your energy. And those demons, they won't go away unless you truly repent, okay? Those demons that you open those doors from, it could be through generational curses or through your disobedience. There could be many ways to go open up those doors, okay? But once you notice that, that means that God is calling you. And once you, once you start getting conscious to understand that these are spirits in your room, demonic spirits, because there are, there are angel, uh, heavenly spirits, but they're also demonic spirits. So once you start to notice there's demonic spirits tormenting you, it's time to get delivered. Okay, it's time to acknowledge that. And it's time to put on the armor. It's time to be obedient. Remember the Bible says through the obedience of, of Christ. Let me read this real quick for y'all real quick. This is in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 to 15, right? Oh, sorry, chapter uh, to verse five says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay, so that's 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 your power, man. When it comes to, and I, I see people on YouTube charging you guys courses to get deliverance. And to me, that's crazy because that, that's if, if you're gonna help someone get deliverance, it should be free, okay? You should never go to someone who's charging for that, guys. Listen, this is free right here, man. Take a screenshot if you want. Take a screenshot if you want. Send a sign to God's calling you for self deliverance. You don't have to do all that. I was delivered. I didn't have to go to a pastor. And I'm not saying pastors can't do that. I'm not saying they can't do that. But best believe deliverance comes when you desire to be delivered. When you truly want to surrender to God, the knowledge will come unto you. The wisdom will come unto you. You don't need someone else. You need God and, and the Son of uh, Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. So I hope you guys got edified in this video. These are seven signs God calling you for self deliverance. If you guys learned something in this video, and I, this if the video bless you. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below for any signs that I'm missing or anything that you went through. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.